शुक्ला जी हेड ऑफ मैकेनिकल डिपार्टमेंट एंड कन्वेनर ऑफ शुक्ला जी हेड ऑफ मैकेनिकल डिपार्टमेंट एंड कन्वेनर ऑफ टू डेज नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंसीट योर प्रोग्राम दैट इज कम्प्लीट योर फोर इन प्रोग्राम एजुकेशन ऑब्जेक्टिव मीन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ ज्वाइनिंग बी टेक प्रोग्राम सो आफ्टर डूइंग स्टूडेंट्स after uh, you can say span of 15 years 20 years and mission means how are we going to achieve those uh, or that vision that we have set for us so this vision and mission this is the starting point that we should look into when we start with you know, our best education approach and then we keep on uh, coming down uh, from vision mission program education objective will come then program outcomes will come and the course out so the thing that you will be directly dealing with or that requires uh, ultimate uh, you know attention that is your course out okay so whenever government implements certain policy what is the most important part government has framed the policy the most important part is the execution and execution too is at the lowest level so that lowest level where we can work upon that is at the course out so if course out the thing can be implemented religiously in its true spirit then all other things above they are bound to give the desired results that we should understand so here uh, there are two more things the design process that i have already uh, explained that from vision mission to course outcomes uh so we uh, have from top down approach then uh, there is one uh, more term here that is known as graduate attitudes okay so uh, in these graduate attitudes we were talking about your attitude behavior knowledge skills so aict or the governing bodies they have uh, fixed certain graduate attitudes that uh, uh, you can say an engineer must possess okay so those graduate attributes have uh, helped us to uh, define program outcomes okay so this is the framework of uh, outcome <coughs> so your outcome based education the thing that i was talking about in the previous slide we had uh, only uh, talked about the key components which are again shown here so this obe framework basically it is a closed loop process okay so the implementation thing that i was talking about uh, that thing is important that you can see from this slide so here apart from the key components of how to do this we should understand that the assessment and the evaluation process that we are talking about okay yeah to zoom out kahin please uh, i have been in this फर्क पड़ा है स्क्रीन पर ठीक and that is very very important so here you can see that first we assess the course assessment okay course assessment this course assessment uh, will be you know uh, covered through your course planning and delivery so where we have syllabus teaching method learning activities and assessment tools will be able to assess the course so once we assess the course a program has many number of courses so those courses evaluated or assessed together they will give the assessment of the program okay and once we have assessed the programs then there, uh, there must be many programs btech electronics btech computer science btech it btech mechanical engineering 
those programs together, they will give the idea of the institutional assessment. So the assessment that has been carried out, the feedback that has been obtained, that will give us certain instruments for further improvement. So once we have obtained the assessment levels, then we must have set certain target levels. The gap between the target and the assessment levels that we have obtained, that will give us some inputs for the improvements. So whatever improvements that we will feel that it should be done to achieve the target, those improvements, they must be your, the key components then must be revised. Okay? There may be a possibility that individual teacher need to uh, revise its course outcomes. There may be a possibility that individual teacher need to revise its syllabus. Okay? Or the lab experiment. Uh, by identifying where is the gap. So, your course outcomes, they need to be, you know, fine-tuned further to achieve the desired target. Your program uh, outcomes, obviously your program outcome statements are the general statements and uh, what is expected from uh, uh, any student. So, they don't need revision because that is the ultimate objective. So, maximum revision process of the feedback that will be taking place at the course learning outcomes. And this is the point where teacher and the students, they are directly involved. In fact, students and teacher together, they can assess, they can discuss that there is the gap in the uh, attainment level that has been achieved or the target level that has been achieved. So this is a closed loop process that is being followed. And apart from that, see, there is one more thing here that uh, we get feedback on the inputs of the industry, we get feedback from the professionals. So, uh, by incorporating those feedbacks, the, uh, you know, uh, key components need to be revised. Though I just talked about that the maximum improvements or the dynamic changes will be required, frequent dynamic changes will be required in the course outcomes. But we have other statements also, we have institution, vision, mission, we have uh, your uh, program educational objective. Those may also be uh, required to revise after a certain duration of time. Because we all have seen a uh, COVID pandemic situation. So such kind of thing may force us uh, to have a paradigm shift in the kind of approach that we are adopting in the education process. Sir, uh, nowadays 360 feedback is required. So, at what level it is required? At course outcome level or PO level or PEO level? Uh, see, uh, sir, things are, all things are related. Yes. In fact, uh, uh, the feedbacks, those are at different levels. Uh, like in the uh, OBE, what we have, uh, individual teacher will be getting feedback from the uh, sure. students who has uh, who have studied their uh, uh, his or her course. Okay, that will be the uh, uh, feedback at the course level. Okay, then uh, I'll say that there are many uh, courses being taught in a particular semester. So after compiling those courses, there will be feedback from faculty to the you know department. I'll say or at the program level from the faculty. Then we will have graduating students, exit survey that we talk about. So once uh, the students, they have, uh, you know, uh, completed four years. So what is their feedback, overall feedback with regard to, you know, the complete four years of program. So that will help us uh, uh, in getting the overview of that. Then we will require feedback from the alumni that uh, after they have entered into, you know, a practical situation or industry, what is their feedback that uh, uh, whether our program that has been designed with these objectives, whether they are able to, they find themselves comfortable uh, after uh, passing out. Then we'll have feedback from industry. So, uh, those industry personnel, they will give us feedback uh, on the basis of, uh, you know, uh, if uh, our alumni working there. Okay, apart from that, uh, if our alumni is not working there, we have industry personnel, they will give us feedback whether our curri uh, curriculum is up to date or not, whether it is meeting the industry uh, requirement or not. 
So such kind of thing, uh, that's what, uh, like uh, once the process is in place, it requires continuous monitoring, continuous assessment. So uh, that way it was taken. So I'll briefly touch upon what is the meaning of PEO, PO, and then we will uh, finally move into uh, COs. So I have told you regarding PEO. So these PEOs, see, you need to understand. When we say PEO, PO, then CO, then institution, uh, vision and vision, these are the statements. Okay, you can say punch lines in a way. So uh, guiding lights, I say that once we have uh, decided something then we need to stick on to them. So these are all statements which can be, you know, uh, fine-tuned further depending on the feedback that we have got. So PEO, uh, that is your program educational objective. Uh, the target for this is for first few years after that. <coughs> that will give us program uh, educational objective that we are expecting uh, that they will be met or they will, we are in a, we will be in a position to assess them after four to five years uh, of our education in a particular program. Okay, so uh, these PEOs they will be guided by global and local uh, needs. These PEOs they will be guided by the vision of the institution, long term goals. Okay, so try to understand this thing. So PEO lies between your institutional vision and mission and your POs and COs. It lies in between. Fine. And uh, for uh, defining the PEOs, uh, we must continuously need to work with our stakeholders, that is our employers, industry, students, and health. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, Dr. Anuj, while defining also, we need to uh, take them uh, into the picture uh, so that uh, they help us in defining and then further getting the feedback and revising. Okay. So these PEOs. Uh, they are not required to revise very frequently, uh, but after a gap of you can say 3, 4 three years, years or 5 years. After 4 years we can. So, uh, next is your program outcomes. Program outcome means uh, your uh, BTEC degree, for example. Okay. So, your program outcomes <coughs> are in the statement. And I told you there are four keywords of OBE. One is your knowledge, skill, attitude, and behavior. That is your outcomes. We call them as attributes. Okay. So uh, POs are the statements uh, that uh, gives us an idea about the attributes or the qualities which an engineer must have. And when I uh, show you those attributes, uh, you will appreciate the fact that. Attributes are uh, not only technical attributes. As a person, as a responsible engineer, what qualities you should have in you? Okay. So uh, during COVID pandemic, all of uh, us uh, have uh, you know uh, gone through the education process uh, by sitting at our home. Okay, and we have realized that only getting technical knowledge is not uh, sufficient in life. There are many things that will come into picture, the learning will happen when you actually come into the campus offline home. So, there are many things which uh, gets uh, imbibed into us uh, once we, uh, during the process of coming in the campus. Okay. So, uh, here, uh, these are the graduate uh, attributes that uh, any engineering program should have. Okay. And uh, these POs, uh, we are not defining these POs. In fact, we need not define the POs. Those are, you know, implied statements. Though they have been defined by uh, your uh, AICTE uh, and uh, uh, we cannot define them. Now, here you see those graduate attributes. So, in every statement, uh, there are 12 uh, graduate attributes. Okay, the words which have been highlighted, those are the graduate attributes. There are 12 graduate attributes. One is engineering knowledge, problem analysis, design, development of solution, conduct investigation of complex problems. These are all technical things that we are talking about. Then 
modern tool usage. So up to uh, one to five program of uh, you can say graduate attributes. Those are technical, related to your skill, related to your knowledge, and then you see number six attribute: the engineer and the society. So engineer will be an engineer because he is an engineer for the society. He has to work for the betterment of the society. He should have, uh, you know, some sympathy towards society. He should have a feeling that he should be able to contribute to the society. So, he must have this attribute. Then, environment and sustainability. So, you must keep into consideration being an engineer that you should be responsible. You should work towards betterment of the environment. Okay? So, environment and sustainability. Then, next is ethics. Okay? The most important thing. So, every now and then, uh, some students uh, are sitting here. So, ethics is the most important part of uh, education process. This ethics was part of education process in the conventional method as well and in the OBE as well. Okay? So, ethics, while appearing in exam, you require ethics. While preparing your practical file, you need uh, your ethics. While submitting project report, you need ethics everywhere you need ethics. So, for like being a good human being, you, you require ethics. In fact, when you enter into career in the professional, you can say some, some, any profession, in fact, any company, there also you need to follow the professional ethics. So, uh, ethics is another uh, attribute. Then, individual and team work. You should be capable of work individually whenever or independently when required and you should be able to work in a team whenever required. So both qualities are required. Then your communication skills. So if you are a good engineer technically but if you are not able to communicate that thing effectively, 50% thing is not done. So knowledge which is inside the mind unless expressed uh, effectively, it doesn't have any meaning. So, if I am expert of, say for example, outcome based education and I am not able to communicate uh, my knowledge to you, so there will be no use. So, communication is another important aspect. Then, project management and finance. That is another attribute. Then, lifelong learning. So, this is uh, again uh, another important uh, attribute. Once we enter into job and if we feel that, okay, Job is uh, like we are into the job now, uh, like we need not do anything extra in our life, we need not to learn anything new in life, then you will not be able to survive. So lifelong learning is a continuous effect uh, which requires till we live basically, till death we need to, we need to have an attitude that will inspire us to uh, learn continuously. So learning never ends. <coughs> So, by looking at these 12 graduate attributes, you must have understood this thing that these are expected from any good engineer, I will say. Along with these, uh, now, now we need to look at the statements. So, in the graduate attribute is engineering knowledge and apply the knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering, fundamentals and engineering specialization to the solution of complex unique problems. This is the program outcome statement we need to understand. So if you remember the key components of OBE slide, there I have shown that your graduate attributes, they are defining the program outcomes. So once my B.Tech degree is over, I should be able to apply the knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering fundamentals and my specialization to the solution of complex engineering problems. I should be in a position to apply the knowledge that I have gained for providing solution to the problems. This is my PO1 statement. This statement I try to evaluate. Uh, once uh, uh, I pass out from any BTEC degree. Similarly, in the problem analysis, we, I should be able to identify, formulate, review, analyze complex learning problems, <coughs> substantiated conclusion using principles of mathematics, natural science and engineering sciences. This is your statement number two. So if you look at these PO statements carefully, 
the first five statements, these are focusing on complex engineering problems. So means you need to be uh, competent enough once you complete your B.Tech degree to provide solution to complex engineering problems, to understand complex engineering problems. Apart from other attitudes uh, uh, or uh, you can say uh, behavior uh, aspects which are incorporated in the remaining graduate. I hope uh, this thing is clear. So that's why uh, those uh, faculty who are involved in this uh, implementation of OBE for your uh, <coughs> accreditation. So uh, in a way if I uh, say that these program outcome statements, these are fixed. They do not need uh, to be revised basically because these are implied things that we have to achieve. So if we look at this modern tool usage, obviously like uh, the thing that I was talking about, all of you use uh, certain software tools, certain uh, hardware kits uh, to uh, you know experiment, okay, to develop something new. So here uh, like I should be able to create, select, apply appropriate techniques, resources, modern engineering tools for the prediction and modeling to complex engineering activities, again the complex engineering activities. Then uh, in general in the society, we should be applied uh, to assess societal health, safety, legal and cultural issues and the constituent responsibilities relevant to professional engineering practice. So we need to understand. So you all young engineers are sitting here. Unless we are responsible to societal issues, unless we feel responsible to cultural issues, unless we feel responsible to uh, our uh, you know country problems unless we feel responsible towards environment there is no use of uh, having an engineering degree so we have to be responsible we have to understand our responsibility apart from getting a simple engineering degree so that's what where your outcome based education is different from your conventional education in a way that we have formalized these things to enter into education process which were not directly formalized. They were part of our earlier education process as well. But they were not identified categorically. Now these are being told to you that okay, these are important aspects that you have to take care of. When we are framing any syllabus, I was telling you that the course outcome is the first thing that is there between teacher and student. Similarly, the syllabus of the course is the first thing or the most important thing that, that is the, uh, you can say, primary part uh, from where the education process starts. So, while framing a syllabus, we, if my subject is uh, able to address certain societal issues, cultural issues into our syllabus, then that will be a big thing. So, from a course itself, everything will initiate where we can address these uh, graduate attributes and we can uh, prepare engineers having these attributes. So uh, ethics thing, uh, in fact uh, uh, this is very very important uh, if some PG students are there, some research scholars are there uh, and even when VTEC students submit their project, your teacher must be telling you that okay, you get your uh, report checked through Turnitin or some anti plagiarism software. So uh, that is also a part of uh, ethics. Uh, if you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, using uh, the contribution of somebody else, he or she must be given due acknowledgement, due respect that okay, we are using. Uh, uh, or uh, we should acknowledge the contribution of other people as well. Then, apart from 12, as uh, uh, we were having a discussion or we are saying that we need to uh, assess course outcomes and program outcomes. Program outcomes, I told you that these are already defined by our accreditation <coughs> agencies. Then, you may have a question in your mind that there is the flexibility. <coughs> Or there is, it, it, does it mean that there is no difference in the program outcomes of different courses? 
how can the program outcomes of computer science engineering, then uh, electronics engineering, the mechanical engineering be different? So that way, uh, a flexibility has been provided that we are supposed to design program specific outcomes. So, three to four program specific outcomes can be defined by any institution or you can say program coordinator that will uh, incorporate the program specific things. Okay, so uh, like uh, uh, these are the, we call them as PSOs. So, in a way, you should, you should say that we will have 12 POs to evaluate and we'll have three to four PSOs to it, program specific. Okay, so program specific outcomes will be different for computer science students, will be different for mechanical engineering students, will be different for electronics and computer Okay, so uh, for civil engineering we can say that uh, a student will be able to analyze and design building structural systems. See, when we talk about, when we will talk about uh, individual course, there you will feel the difference like if you are uh, studying the subject of say for example strength of material, then you will talk about directly strength of material or whatever content is present in that particular subject. Here I am talking about the entire civil engineering gist that I should be able to design and build a structural system. I should be able to analyze that thing. Once I am civil engineer, I am not expected to talk about strength of material. I am expected to talk about civil engineering in general. So, we are talking about ability to analyze and design building structural system. We are talking about <coughs> ability to provide design solution to water supply and sewage system. I am talking about ability to identify and analyze transport engineering problems depending on where your program uh, specialization is heading towards. So, these PSOs will target your specific area of the program that you are studying. <coughs> now, this is your course outcome that I was talking about and uh, uh, that is the, uh, you know, uh, lowest level thing and the most important one, okay. So, um, the course outcomes are the statements of the observable student action. <coughs> See, the first hand interaction between a teacher and student is at the course level. The first hand information or the data that is obtained by a teacher or a department or an institution is at the course level. If this course level thing is, you know, uh, religiously uh, followed, or you can say uh, ideal process is implemented at course level, then this OBE will be uh, achieved in two sense. So here, these statements, observable student action, it will be evident through this course outcome. Then each course, it will be designed to meet four to six course outcomes. So every course, it will have four to six out course outcomes. I'll show you. Uh, one sample uh, of the course outcome as well. So that will give you an idea that how can we basically uh, define course outcome and how can we evaluate course outcome. Okay? And uh, these course outcomes, they should be, yes, uh, in fact, uh, the teacher who will be, you know, uh, preparing the syllabus of uh, a particular course, he must keep this thing in mind that while framing course outcome, uh, the course outcome should be defined in such a way that it should be measurable. Or he should keep in mind that whether the teacher can ask a question <coughs> related to that course outcome or not. <coughs> if we can frame a question related to that particular course outcome on the basis of content of the syllabus, it means my course outcome is measurable. So my course outcome should be measurable through questions being asked at different, uh, you know, levels of course assessment. It could be in the form of your minor exams, it could be in the form of your end semester exams, it could be through assignments that we have, it could be through your uh, seminars, it could be through your projects, wherever direct uh, interaction is there, it should be measured. 
and your program outcomes are uh, attained through program specific core courses. See, in every program we have different kinds of courses. We have core courses and we have elective courses. In elective courses we have uh, uh, program elective and we have open elective. So more or less we can say that if our core courses we can focus upon then your POs are obtained through your program specific courses. Now, your course outcomes, we categorize course outcomes in two categories. One category is known as words, H-O-T-S, which we call as higher order thinking skills. And another category of course outcomes is lows, lower order thinking skills. In fact, see, we, uh, like you are doing B Tech and we are talking about courses and laws <coughs> at uh, engineering level and graduation level. If you have small children in your home, younger brother, sister, uh, you open their book, at some, somewhere in the practice book you will find laws course written in school books even. Yes, but we do not understand what is that laws and courts, but it is actually in, the, in some of the books at the school level also. So your lords are lower order thinking skills, your hearts are higher order thinking skills and your course outcomes <laughs> which are defined in these two categories. So in lower order thinking skills, we have three kind of course outcomes. Means what we expect from the student once he or she finishes a particular course, he should remember the terminology the definitions that we have taught, he should be able to understand, he should be able to apply. Apply means existing things are being applied. Say for example, I taught Laplace transform to the students. So, a student should be able to apply the concept of Laplace transform to solve a numerical. So, your remember, understanding, applying, these are lower order thinking skills. And if you move towards higher order thinking skills, that involves analyzing, evaluating, creating. So in the lower order thinking skills, the focus is on already existing thing. Whether remembering that, whether understanding that, whether applying that. We are using the knowledge already created. Whereas your higher order thinking skills is using, in fact it is, is towards creation of the knowledge. If, if I expect you to create a new concept, for that what we need? We need to analyze what is around us. Okay? We need to evaluate and then we need to create. You will be able to understand once I read these definitions of this. So this pyramid is again the same thing. So at the lowest level we have remember, then understand, then apply, analyze, evaluate and create. So this thing, I understand that these three levels of your loads, you already have an idea of because most of us, we restrict ourselves only in the lower order thinking skills category. We do not even think of moving towards higher order thinking skills first. So while framing the syllabus, while framing the course outcomes, we must keep this thing in mind that the content of my syllabus must provide a student to work towards higher order thinking skills. So if you look at that, see, remember means the knowledge that we have acquired, we are able to recollect that or not. Say for example, I taught you a definition in the next class, I asked you that, okay, uh, define uh, a particular term or not, then understand, we understand the concepts, then apply, I already told you now, the analyze. Analyze means breaking open the concepts into parts and drawing connections among them. Okay? Then evaluate means drawing judgment in line with a set of guidelines. Then create means coming up with new or original work. That is the creation of knowledge. So higher order thinking skills must be 
incorporated in the course syllabus that we should take. And I will not say, it doesn't mean that all the six levels that we have talked about here, that should be in each and every course, no. There are certain courses which, which do not address higher order thinking at all. Then we may not be able to uh, go up to create level, evaluate level. We, we may go up to analyze level. So that's what uh, I talked about that. Your course outcomes, they should be in number from 4 to 6. At least we should go up to uh, analyze level and then uh, if possible evaluate it. Okay, if the course is very basic, if the course is totally theoretical, then we can't expect a student to create something. But there may be certain subjects where only the higher order thinking skill need to be addressed. For example, we have a BTEC project. So in the project, we don't need lower order thinking skills. We only need higher order thinking skills. So the course outcomes, what we take projects, it must have higher order thinking put in place. Okay? Next. So, uh, in the course outcome we have two things. One is your action word and second is your learning statement. <coughs> so, in the PO we had graduate attribute and the PO statement. Similarly, in course outcome we have two things. One is action word and the learning outcome statement. So your course outcome will start with an action word. Okay. So here are uh, there are certain rules that we must keep in mind while defining course outcome. Corresponding to each category of the level that I talked about, lower order and uh, higher order, certain verbs are predefined. Certain verbs are there which we should incorporate. Uh, for help, that will help us in designing course outcomes. You see here, when you frame a course outcome related to this remember level, see certain verbs are there, define, list, duplicate, repeat, memorize, state. Okay, we can say like that, if we make a course outcome related to this lowest level, we call it as L1, L2, L3, this is H1, H2, H3. Is lower order thinking skills, L1, L2, L3, higher order thinking skills, H1, H2, H3, that way. So in L1, my course outcome should start with that at the end of course, a student will be able to define the terms which are present in the course on, say for example, strength of Sir, like uh, VTEC is a four year program. Yeah. We can say first year is at the level of LOT. Lower order thinking skill after that year wise it is gradually increased up to the end, fourth year. You can say that? Uh, see, not directly. Okay. Uh, uh, why should I say that? that will, uh, though it is expected that from first year to final year uh, the lower order skill will move towards higher order. That is, uh, you know, acceptable in a way that we have final year project where in fact in 8th semester we have project of training where higher order thinking skills will be there. But in the first year also, a few courses, uh, they may, uh, you know, uh, uh, point towards higher order skills as well. We cannot directly say no higher order, no, it's not like that. Uh, in fact, we may focus on up to H1, at least H1. Okay, in fact your course syllabus should be framed in a way that few topics where students get an uh, opportunity uh, to create something, go at the uh, lower level. For example, in first year we have C program. Okay, so one way is to learning C that will uh, focus up to lower order thinking skill. But if a student is able to, you know, make a program, it means he's going towards creation. One thing is, like certain uh, given set of programs he is, uh, uh, you know, uh, coding, developing the coding for that. But we may give them certain, uh, you know, uh, problems where we ask them to do coding on their own to address a particular problem. Some case study kind of thing, in fact, in uh, C programming can be uh, incorporated in the skills. Okay? 
But sir, analyzing in if we talk about analyzing, that analyze what we create new things, we study about or analyze about the pre-created things. If we talk about the analyzing, so yes. how can we divide in high order and low order? And in applying, we apply the things for creating a new thing. See, uh, such kind of dilemmas in the doubts as well as in the understanding that will always be there. In fact, uh, uh, when you define CEOs and when you define POs, there are many terms that, that will confuse us. The thing that you are saying that is perfectly right in a way that obviously when I say analyze, uh, uh, analyze is for uh, you know, uh, already existing thing. Yeah, we already analyze the thing that is pre-created. Okay, very correct. Now, thing is, if we have to create something new, that requires two things. One is analyzing the pre-existing one and analyzing the proposed one also. If, if you have developed certain concept, for example, uh, say for example, uh, you analyze something existing, fine. Now you propose a new system, for example, you develop its block diagram. Okay? Now that block diagram you will have to analyze in bits and pieces. So, creation of new thing involves both analyzing existing as well as the analyzing the proposed one. Uh, like in second phase, firstly we do analyze and then we apply. So, uh, analyzing and applying... Uh, no, no, no. See, I gave you an example. For example, I told you Laplace transform. So, if you are applying Laplace transform to solve an electrical circuit, that is applied. Okay? Uh, I hope you uh, understood. No, I am not concerned about electrical field. Uh, you tell me your uh, <laughs> computer science. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. No problem. In fact, concepts are... Uh, why are you clapping? I don't understand. Okay, fine. Uh, some algorithm which is existing. Okay. Uh, some neural, artificial neural network uh, algorithm which is being proposed by uh, some researcher, you are using that algorithm. Say, for, take an example of Python program, C language you take, okay? Jo C ka, aapka jo structure hai, codes hai, instructions hai, what are you doing? You are applying code. Yeah, that is pre-created. Yes, that is pre-created. Like ma'am, link list, aap kahi apply kar rahe hai, link list ka algorithm, deadlock algorithm, kahi aap apply kar rahe hai. Things are already defined, but you are applying it. But in applying, we created a new thing. That that will move to us. Analyze evaluation. Automatically, it works with you. Okay. So what I want to say here that the course content it must you know give something to students where they need to work or they need to go towards higher order. Okay, we may give a question to the students in the minor examination where uh, say one mark or two mark question that will address to that he or she has not studied at all. Maybe you have taught them link list concept. Okay, and you give them a, a question that okay, uh, you write a program using link list uh, for uh, certain problems that uh, you come across. Uh, uh, in your say department or in college, you can frame a problem for that, which is not directly part of that, which will require student to uh, uh, apply his mind to give solution. That is high order. That means in analysis, we first of all analyze the problem, then evaluate the solution with your problem yes. may decompose here, then we create. Obviously. Uh, that's like Sir, a project. Creation means the final thing has come into picture. But final thing will come into picture only when, when we, you know, uh, do this process of analyzing and writing. Like in the project, we have a problem in the first analyze and yes, yes. then evaluate and evaluate whatever the solution we have thought about, the evaluation is going to direction, yes. then we go for a creation. Yes. And in fact, try to understand, I told you that these are, these words are subjective. I cannot say that these skills are not used anywhere here also. When, when you come to applying, uh, uh, some, some, some kind of thing will be there, but that will be at very preliminary level.
I think both the faces on somehow they are reversed. Uh, uh, like applying is uh, in high order and analyzing in low order. On uh, somehow, I can say. See, applying here, I mean to say already existing techniques. Okay? And this applying will come to higher order when you create a new and I apply them. You understood that thing? For example, sir, suppose there is a chemist program and we are writing the apply the chemist program to analyze this. Then if you are knowing the theory, then you can analyze that. Yes. So it is applied. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. In fact, uh, Thermin theorem is being applied to solve that, uh, you know, uh, to find out certain value. That is applied. I am from electrical. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, create में भी apply तो होगा। आपका जो है ना evaluate में भी होगा और analyze में भी होगा। जो in fact testing knowledge जो सीखे तो हम कुछ भी नहीं करेंगे। See, whenever you create knowledge without analyzing, without evaluating, you cannot without applying भी नहीं होगा। Apply तो करना ही पड़ेगा। ठीक है ना? और knowledge को create करने में already existing को भी apply करना पड़ सकता है यार। And when you you propose something new Okay, then that new thing will be applied by somebody else. Okay, so we cannot segregate things, we cannot draw lines between that. It is just an effort to, you know, uh, give a feel that we should have higher order thinking skills and lower order. Sir, one thing I want to add. Uh, I think uh, some are confused. Uh, I think uh, uh, you want to clarify. Suppose uh, we are at L1 or 2 level. So, par bhi we can apply and analyze from the basic things. Yes, we take small examples, not generalized level. Correct. Okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, sir, I am from uh, business management field. Uh, uh, just uh, want to apply some managerial concepts like GDP, GNP. So, taking small examples, starting from the learning, and then uh, apply at basic small examples, or, or at uh, economy at all. So, when we go for uh, high order skills, then we go for uh, the economic order at the large scale. Yes, very true. In fact, see, lower order thinking skills, they are at, you know, lower level means preliminary levels. Yeah. At, you know, uh, their, their scope is limited. And higher order thinking skills, they have wider scope. That may lead to, you know, further uh, propose a new thing. Okay? <coughs> so, uh, see, uh, while framing CEOs, uh, some certain mistakes normally uh, commit. Uh, like, there are certain acceptable words, some uh, Unacceptable words are we cannot say to know, to understand, to appreciate, to enjoy, to believe. See your action words, action words, they must be measured. We cannot measure or we cannot enjoy, we cannot measure to believe, we cannot measure to appreciate. Okay, so we should do away with such word, words. Okay, and uh, another thing is uh, these words that I talked about, two words or two levels, they should not be merged in one CEO. Normally, like we have a tendency. In fact, when we framed our CEOs, uh, I was very adamant in, uh, you know, uh, the way uh, Ma'am was asking. I made a CEO by, uh, you know, saying that at the end of the course, the student will be able to analyze and evaluate. I did that. I framed the CEO saying that I will be able to analyze and evaluate this, this, this thing. Having a feeling in my mind that without analyzing, how will we be able to evaluate? Okay, but we should make uh, a CEO with analyze separately and with evaluate separately. So these uh, levels of these work, they should not be merged. They should be separate. In fact, uh, see, this is also a continuous learning process. The more you enter into this breaking of CEOs, defining CEOs, the more you will learn. That means कि एक जो topic है उसके लिए दो सी ओ अलग अलग होते हैं analysis के लिए और अलग और evaluation के लिए yes yes obviously 
and with an intention that whether you can ask a question related to that CEO or not okay. in your examination. That, that will be a guiding light. One topic or more than one CEO. Um, one topic and that yes. yes. And in fact, uh, one thing I would like to clarify here, normally we have a confusion that uh, every unit will have a different CEO. No. Your CO1, for example, it will, there are four units. In every unit, we will have something to remember. In every unit, we will have something to define. So, your CO1 may hit all the four units or the three units in the syllabus. So, normally, like earlier, people used to define COs unit wise. They used to feel that, okay, unit 1 means CO1, unit 2 means CO2, it's not. Anymore. So, this is we have already talked about. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, this is a subject that uh, I teach basically and I put its PDF here uh, to uh, make you understand. Uh, so here you see, there are five CEOs, fine, and uh, loads, everyone this is remember, understand, apply. See here, analyze thing is not there. Okay. So here, uh, in fact, here I did that thing, analyze and evaluate things, I, I tell you. Like uh, when uh, this CO4 was trained, I made it analyze and evaluate the active networks like that. Or you may have, like you may not be convinced with the way I have uh, did it. So uh, then L4 is not there, L5 is there, L6 is there. Now you can say that sir, without uh, going into L4, or sorry, you can say uh, this level 4, how could you move to L5 and L6? Okay, so uh, in fact, another another thing is uh, here create doesn't mean that we are able to create a completely new thing. This is a very good basic course of third semester, isn't it? So here we do not expect student to, uh, you know, uh, student to be in a position to completely suggest a new circuit. Uh, after uh, doing VTEC, we are expecting that. But there is one more thing. We have uh, the mapping of CO with PO. So when we map this course outcome with PO, the mapping level will be smaller. Okay, we have a lower level mapping, okay, then medium order mapping, then higher order mapping. So if I, while mapping, if I assign this uh, level 1 to this CO5, then some form of creation is that's the thing. Okay. So here you can see your CO1, it is uh, at the end of the semester the student will be able to describe the terminology, fundamental principles related to electric networks, uh, their representation and synthesis. This is related to remember, then understand, explain various theorems and uh, see that uh, some of studying Thevenin theorem etc. If he understands those theorems, applying thing is a different thing for solving that. Then uh, this comes under with CO2. Then apply left rest transform, planet response, network function parameters to solve and synthesize. This comes under apply. Okay. And uh, see, evaluate. So in circuit theory, those who are in electrical, they can uh, understand that. We have something related to stability of the networks. Okay, we have something related to realization of the network that, you, that that comes under event. Though we are doing that stability and reliability analysis for the existing networks, I agree that with that. But that evaluation of the existing network is a part of you know uh, evaluation of the proposed ones. And since this is a third semester course, so obviously we cannot expect that higher order skill to be addressed though at lower level it will be. So while mapping with program outcomes, I have to keep in mind that mapping level I will keep 1 instead of 3 there. Okay? So then you can see here, design basic electrical network for a given set of network. Basic electrical. That is the time. See, uh, this is course COPO articulation matrix. Here you can change the mapping levels. Either you have to keep 1, 2, 3, like that. So, uh, so once we have 
framed the syllabus, once we have framed the course outcomes, and once we have framed the course <coughs> articulation matrix. Okay, so this is the uh, first step that we need to do. Then we come to assessment. Okay, so in assessment, there are two kind of uh, category of tools. One is your uh, direct assessment, and another is your indirect assessment. We, wherever we talk about feedback thing, that is your indirect assessment. Whether it is feedback from the students, faculty, your employer, alumni, industry, all those feedback things they come under indirect tools. Okay, and your direct tools. Again, as I was telling you, that uh, the direct measurable thing. Uh, between student and teacher is your direct tool. So we will be focusing more on direct tools. And normally when uh, POs are evaluated, we uh, give 70% contribution to the direct assessment and normally 30% to the indirect assessment. It's up to, it varies. It depends on institute, it depends on the faculty, uh, when they sit together and they decide that how much contribution should be given to direct assessment and to the indirect assessment. Normally it could be 80-20 years. Okay. So, uh, see in the direct tools your tests, minor tests are there, semester uh, end exams are there, then assignments, then your projects, labs, all this. This is again the same thing. So, uh, <coughs> This is, so in some form I have already talked about, let us see, uh, we will be measuring the attainment level of COs, okay, and uh, uh, all the questions in the minor examination must have the COs. See, I have myself experienced this thing. If you will keep COs in front of you while framing minor question paper, you will realize that how difficult it is to set the question paper. You will have to think that which questions should you put into the exam which will uh, be help you, which will be helping you in evaluating the creating skill of the student. Then you will also have a feeling that okay, you have to keep one question on definitions and uh, the basic things as well. You have to keep in mind that one question you have to keep in mind uh, which will, uh, uh, you know, help students to work which will judge whether student is able to apply thermonic theorem to uh, give solution to any electric circuit or not. So, while framing question paper, you should keep COs in front of you, okay? Then frame the question paper and you will have to do its planning right at the beginning of the semester because your all course outcomes should be assessed in the entire semester. In minor one, you cannot, uh, you know, touch upon level 5, level 6. You can only uh, touch upon up to level 1. Because it's a university system. In fact, you being affiliated college is also like we are the evaluation scheme of the affiliating university. So there, if we have 30 marks for the sessional and 70 marks for the end semester examination, then how will we evaluate CEOs for the end semester examination? Okay? We cannot. Because those question paper, setting format, those evaluation process, in fact, once the sheets are evaluated, we do not know that uh, in which uh, question a particular student has obtained this much marks. So this is my advice to you people that you restrict yourself to the internal evaluation assessment with respect to corresponding course outcomes. So your continuous internal evaluation part you should religiously follow for assessment of CEOs. That will also be very very helpful. And there you can say that uh, my course outcome has been achieved with respect to at least internal evaluation. Okay. So, uh, here you can see that all the COs, they must be there. Answer sheets must be evaluated CO wise. 
then all the assignments must be based on COs. You can give multiple assignments. In fact, uh, uh, the creation thing that I was talking about, ma'am, uh, you can give assignments, such assignments. We normally have problem by evaluating assignment. Uh, because the students copy assignments. Ek ne banaya, baki sab ne usko copy kar. Okay, but we can uh, ideally we can assign a different problem to every student of the class. How will they copy? If we give numerical to student, we can say that okay, this is the numerical, but the value of resistance will be your roll number, last two digits of your roll number. How can they copy? If we like uh, uh, give a problem that okay. You identify, like we give some generalized uh, uh, scope of the problem and put such thing that student has to incorporate which will be different for every student. So if we are not able to judge that creation part, higher order thinking skill through assign, uh, sorry, through minor exams, we can do it through assignments. We can give specific uh, assignment later. You can conduct an open book exam. Ask them, okay, you bring the book, I will give you three problems. Spend uh, your time opening the book and uh, try to judge. <coughs> in fact, uh, uh, in fact uh, we have introduced this thing in our uh, GJU. Uh, we have introduced third minor, which will be open book minor. They will be allowed to open uh, the book, okay, and uh, Will it not require uh, higher order skills to at least uh, solve the mental problem? Though not truly that higher order skill, but at least will, uh, they'll have a thought process generated during the exam. I think question should be at least in the third minor at the course level only. Yes, if subject content allows that it should be. But sir, uh, as you told that uh, CO, all COs are covered in our course levels. And if we have covered only unit 1 up to minor 1, so all COs will be covered in the unit 1? No, no, no. I am not saying that in minor 1 all COs will be there. No. I am not saying that. Then how is it possible, sir, if I have covered unit 1 up to minor 1? See, that, that is the fault with, uh, you know, uh, our delivery process that up to minor 1 only unit 1 is covered. If we have two minors, then 50% should, should be covered. Uh, before minor one, then yes. if we have got fifty percent of the syllabus, then all COs will be covered in the both the units. Uh, may, maybe or may not be. Maybe or may not be. Because that each unit contains all COs. No, no, no. In syllabus, no. no. See, uh, in our syllabus, there cannot be hard and fast rule like that. Let me tell you. The entire syllabus should be able to give focus to all the CEOs. Again, like uh, uh, you don't make it a point uh, forcing that all CEOs should be present in one unit. No. Like some introductory, say for example, uh, in electric circuits, the unit one is basics of electrical networks, where I uh, teach about uh, KCL, KVL. Usme uh, higher order thinking skills kahan chahiyega? My unit 1 with uh, higher order thinking skill will not be there. Uh, so, if it is there, then it is okay. That is what I am telling. That from course to course it will vary. It is not hard and fast rule that every unit will have all COs covered. It is not hard and fast. If subject content allows that, it is well and good. If you can cover higher order thinking skills in the unit 1 as well, it is not hard and fast. But normally it is not there, uh, otherwise uh, you can do it. Okay, uh, but see, try to understand. If you have six CEOs. Even in the first, uh, even in the university exam syllabus pattern, your question paper pattern, the section 1 contains all the questions from all units. And that, that is particularly related to CO1. And yeah, section 1 contains two units. And both units will be of, maybe it will maybe of, L3, L4 or L5, maybe. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Each unit will be, LP, uh, will be from L1 to L5. See, here in outcome based education, teacher is everything. Basically, without active involvement of the teacher and without understanding of this OB process of the teacher, it cannot be successful. In and uh, everything cannot be formalized. The thing is, this just should be followed in whatever best possible manner. So uh, this is 
one uh, minor test. Uh, here you can see this. This is second minor. Fine. So this question one. Uh, this is obtain transmission parameters of the network. This was the network, and uh, four marks and CO3 has been uh, hitting here. This CO3. Okay. So uh, see CO3 is there. Then here also CO3, CO3, CO4, CO4, five, something like that. CO1, two. I I didn't put any question related to CO1. You can see here. If sir, suppose you will write that anywhere, then it will come from CO5. First question. How can you have done that? You will have get parameter to write. Then it will be from five. No. See, uh, if we write that evaluation thing just by putting the formula and getting that something is not evaluation. Are you getting me? No. Suppose you will write that parameter. Yeah, obtain Z parameters. Yeah. Suppose they will write Z parameters. Then you have to apply KCL and KVL. Then you have to find. So it is. I think. Uh, no, see, you are saying apply. So, uh, I, I have written uh, CO3 only. Apply only. No, no. If I will write the question, you apply the Z parameter for the given circuit. Yes. So it, it will come under CO3, not under CO4. See, we we are obtaining. That's what I'm saying. Uh, evaluating means what? Uh, let me tell you uh, uh, how evaluate will come in. Say, for example, uh, two parameters. Uh, uh, I ask them to evaluate. Given circuit, obtain Z parameter for that, obtain uh, Y parameter for that, and then I write in the question that now uh, uh, you justify. Which parameter is easier to uh, evaluate from this circuit? What they are doing? They are applying the technique of Z parameter, Y parameter. And then, if it is a parallel network, they will say that Y parameter is better uh, parameter to evaluate. Yes. And if it is series network, then Z. Then it will come from. Five. Yes. Then it from comparison come under. Yes. Five. That thing will come under evaluate. But if we directly ask them, see. Uh, again, it is dependent on. Yes, if we cover the CO, then that will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, misuse of uh, just uh, obtaining the parameter. Yes. 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 In question number two, see in question number, uh, is it visible? Question number two, is it visible? No, no, no. So no, no, no. Uh, okay, I will read up. See in question two, the question is check whether the following polynomial is stable or not. Okay, we check करना है कि वो polynomial stable है कि नहीं. तो स्टेबिलिटी के लिए चाहे राउट राउट स्टेबिलिटी का फाइंड आउट करते हैं तो वो आपका अप्लाई तक ही है बस उससे आगे नहीं है
we have given a CO to each question, then CO wise assessment need to be done, not question wise directly. That in CO1, if there were two questions, how many marks student has obtained? In CO2, how many marks student has obtained? Like that. So such sheet should be prepared. So where you can see in question one was for CO2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, in session 1. In session 2, CO1, 2, 3, 4, 5 was not there. Assignment, it was for uh, CO4 and 5. Then this, this is CO, CO wise. So at the end of the semester, in CO1, student scored 7 marks out of total 8 for CO1. Uh, see, total, four, total, total is for CO1 was 4 and for 8. And student got 4, 3 plus 4, 7, 7 out of 8 in CO1, 6 out of 8 in CO2, like that. Okay? So, uh, this is how uh, for every student this thing is prepared. Fine. And once this thing has been prepared, then there comes a thing that we call as rubrics. Okay? This rubrics means how to, you know, evaluate <coughs> this data or these marks. How will we say that my target course uh, outcomes have been achieved or not? Okay, for that, rubrics need to be defined or developed by the department itself, by the institute itself, keeping in mind the level of the students, keeping in mind the input that we have given, keeping in mind that, okay, this will be the realistic target at the very first instance, and then we will have to keep on revising. One example here you can see that, what we have done, that we have calculated how many students go 75% marks. What percentage of students got 75% marks in a particular CO? So this 0.82 means 0.82 means 82% of the students achieved 75% marks in CO1. In CO2, 78% students got more than 75%. Just an example, like uh, I have put dash here. Your calculator for everyone. Yeah, for every CEO. And then we have fixed a target that okay, the rubric says, for example, if 75% of the students got more than 75% of marks in a particular CEO, I will say that target is achieved. I think CEO 3 may 2 uh, if it is, if my rubric is for more than 75, then 70 uh, to 75. Yeah, uh, this is for more than 70. Okay, more than 70. This is for more than 70. Okay. That depends on you how you define things. <coughs> this is for more than 70. If you keep more than 75, then we'll have three here and then two here and two here. This is the most important uh, assessment CO wise at your say, course. This every teacher must do and uh, say out of experience only I am telling you if you do that you will get a totally different picture of your uh, uh, impression about the class. You will realize that ki kahi to kuch problem hai jaha vat karne ka hai. You may have a feeling that okay in CO4 uh, my level was not achieved at all, for example. Here you will have a picture, for example, in CO4, only 10% students got uh, more than 75%. Mm -hmm. Then you will realize the where we need to focus uh, while delivering my content. Maybe students are able to understand basic concepts, but they are not able to apply. Maybe students are able to apply, they are not able to create many. Maybe they are not able to analyze. So this CO attainment, this is known as CO attainment, it must be done religiously and it must be you know, analyzed religiously at the end of the semester. When we compile marks now, there must be a departmental meeting in the head of the department along with all the teachers, some discussion must be there. 
individual teacher should tell the head of the department, okay, uh, in my subject such such kind of things uh, have taken place, in the next semester I am going to uh, do such kind of corrective actions so that my target level is in Got it? So that's why I was telling this thing that this attainment of CEOs is very very important and this was from direct component because we have used direct tools, sessionals, assignments, these are the direct tools, no feedback. This is another example, here rubrics is more than 73, then 50 to 72, then less than 51, these rubrics have been developed, okay. So here, uh, these are the attainment scores, this is for CO1, okay, there are many methodologies, in fact I have incorporated 2, 3, now it will have to uh, like decided by corresponding teacher as well as you can say the department of the program for it. So here uh, you can uh, have the average, class average of CO1. So for CO1 the class average on a scale of 3 is 2.5, for 2 this, 3 this, 4 this. So class average you will come to know that uh, how much uh, students have done and this is the percentage of the students. Here we can say that uh, even uh, we can say that if uh, uh, more than 75% students uh, scored, we say that CO is attained, otherwise CO is not attained. Okay, uh, Dr. Anush here you can see, uh, if it is 72% students have achieved, we are saying CO is, uh, target level is not achieved basically. Basically, it's uh, up to us what target we set for the attainment of CEOs. Okay? This exercise is only for the internal assessment. You can yes. For, in fact, this exercise we can practically do only for internal. For external, we are not in a position to do. Then we need not to calculate for external. Uh, for for external. Uh, see, this CO wise assessment for external we cannot do. Okay. Because we do not have uh, the CO wise marks or question wise marks available from the university. We have only the total one. So if this question wise thing you can do for only for the internal assessment. Yeah. Then it is acceptable if the um, uh, university exams to is level per divide nature. Right? Yes, you can say to that. In fact, one more thing can be done. Uh, for the external one, uh, you know, only with respect to the, uh, you can take the average uh, percentage of marks and for external you can adopt it's different criteria. Yes, it is equally divided into CEOs, you can say. Yes, so no that CEOs. way you can do. Okay. Otherwise, if you will not do, then it is not a problem? Yeah. Uh, see, depends on, uh, you know, team members who okay. come for. They may say that 70% components you have left unattended, they yes. may say that. Isn't it? So that's why I'm telling that instead of leaving that, you can do it at a, a, in a different format basically. Okay, that is it. So then uh, after COs attainment, we have <coughs> POs and PSOs and for that we need mapping between COs and POs. I showed you the course articulation matrix. So this was the course articulation matrix, fine. And this correlation, I told you, uh, it need to be defined whether the correlation should be of level 3, 2, 1. Here also one important thing. When we have course articulation matrix, we map course outcomes with program outcomes. See, program outcomes is for the entire program, which involves around 50 subjects, 60 subjects. Okay? So, it is not necessary that every CEO, every PO will hit. It may not hit at all. See, you see here, CO1 is only hitting PO1, PO7, PO12. In rest of it is only dash. Just to give you an example. So, it is not necessary every subject cannot target every PO, every subject for every course outcome, we cannot target every PO at same level, mapping level of 3, uh, th that may vary, okay, because program outcome is for entire program. So, uh, your uh, teamwork, your uh, ethics, your uh, then, uh, creation thing, that thing will be uh, more working towards your project part, 
Okay? In labs, uh, the application of tools, etc. will come in the labs. Where understanding part, knowledge part, that will come in your uh, theoretical subjects. Okay? So, uh, this mistake should not be done that every CEO will get everything. No. What about PO6? I think environmental. Uh, I don't remember what was PO6. PO6 related to environment. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, like, uh, see, uh, if, if I talk about electronics, there are certain subjects which will, uh, in some way, they, for example, VLSI design subject. There I can take care of environment and issues or something like that. He has rightly said that. So, otherwise, if my subject is not uh, related to that, uh, I cannot uh, correlate with that one. Uh, my project team that must be uh, getting that uh, environment. Okay. Uh, I don't remember uh, directly. This is just to give you an idea that uh, through example uh, how can you basically correlate. So uh, this is the again. We had different levels of COs. We have taken CO attainment average. Okay. One way could be calculating mapping is this one. So what we can do? We calculated individual COs. We calculated average CO attainment. Now this average CO attainment can be multiplied with the weights that we have defined in COPO articulation matrix. See, this you see here. CO1 <coughs> is related to POs like this. 3 is the level, mapping level 3, 3, here 2, here 2, here 2. Now what we are doing? My average attainment level is 2.66. Fine? So, wherever my correlation is 3, highest correlation, so whatever my average attainment level is there, I will keep the same average attainment level. Here also same, here also same. Now here correlation is 2. So what I will do? For this 2.67, I do 2.667 into 2 by 3. Did you understand? So it means my uh, that value is 1.7. If it is uh, correlation level is 1, I will be 2.667 into 1 by 3. Fine? So this is one way. This is uh, for CO1, then CO2. Now uh, this is my average. So whatever uh, these numbers are in blue now, I have taken average of that. And this is my average uh, PO attainments. This is PO attainment <coughs> corresponding to this subject series. And these are the target levels. Okay. And uh, this is the percentage PO attainment. Direct for that. And uh, indirect tools we have already talked about. Yes, uh, for you know, normally uh, some issues come while uh, you know having uh, indirect tools for assessment. So the way we have framed COs uh, for attainment, so in the indirect assessment what we do, we have to frame questionnaire for people. And that questionnaire should be framed in such a way that those questions should be related to uh, every PO. Okay, uh, normally what mistakes people do, uh, they directly put the PO as the question. Okay, uh, whether you you are able to, you know, design complex, no. The questions should be, you know, linked to that. Yes. So here you can see, uh, see, this was the PO, an ability to apply the knowledge of mathematics or uh, something like that. So, uh, this is one example that to what level you are able to apply. Uh, it's not very well framed. I have taken an example from somewhere else. So then, uh, how many uh, uh, students? They answered zero. These are the ratings: zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then uh, the total uh, score here is uh, twenty-five, and this is the weighted average, and we calculate uh, percentage at it. So these indirect tools, uh, the questions. They should be framed in such a way that all the POs are covered. So here, uh, see, I was telling you that uh, different rubrics are developed by different institutions. 
for direct attainment, some people keep 70% uh, weightage for indirect 30%, some people keep 80% for direct 24 uh, indirect. Similarly, uh, in the direct also we have two components, one is your uh, continuous evaluation and another is end semester. Okay, so there uh, uh, your internal marks are in 50-50, we can keep 50-50 uh, division for that, here you can see. Uh, this is continuous internal evaluation, 50%. This uh, end semester, 30% weightage has been kept and uh, 50, 30, 80 and uh, this 20% is kept for indirect. Again, it's a, you know, subjective thing. Uh, though more or less, it's in the range of, direct is in the range of 70, 30. Like. In GGU, I think 70, 30. In MGU, I think 80, 20. Yeah, so that thing can be done. So here, uh, see this calculation is uh, with uh, 80, 20. So 80% direct assessment, 20 indirect. So this is the average of direct PO attainment. This is the average of indirect PO attainment. Then we apply 80-20 weightage. This was the target that we had set and we can find out that. Okay, and targets must also be uh, revised. Every, you can say, semester or at the end of every academic session. Maybe sometimes what happens, we set unrealistic target or we couldn't achieve that we can lower down our target after uh, properly formalizing. Okay, so uh, once uh, such kind of thing is done, though it seems that it is all numbers, no. If you religiously catch out, I am telling you out of my experience, you will really find startling observations out of the analysis that you have done. Okay, so. So all the POs, they must be adequately addressed through your core courses and COs, okay. So, uh, your essence of OBE is, we have to uh, do effective course delivery, assessment and effective curriculum delivery. And obviously, it needs continuous improvement. So, continuous improvement is the key, we need to uh, implement uh, this components of OBE, uh, you can say that in our curriculum delivery process and it need to be uh, taken care of on regular basis. We cannot leave it key, uh, like we have NBA visit schedule, say for example next month we will do all the calculation and then we forget. No. So once this thing has come into practice, it should be religiously followed. If every teacher does it, then uh, it will be done. As a part of the way we prepare sessionals at the end of the semester, along with that, it should be mandatory that the course attainment levels must also be submitted along with your marks. In fact, uh, through website also, this thing can also be done. That will also be a good uh, you know, option. Uh, you'll have everything on. Okay. So, uh, sir, one thing. Uh, as you explained earlier, we set a course objective, program objective, and then after the analysis and mapping, we find where is the gap, is what we deliver and what the students are not getting. So, as of your experience, how can a teacher uh, should try to fill that gap as, uh, through the assignments, through the lecture, through any case See, uh, that, that will vary course to course in a way. As I, I, I was answering his question, for example, in my subject, what happened? Like, you know what questions you have given in the minors, okay? So, uh, like, if you feel that uh, the students, they could not score well in the uh, CO which was related to, uh, for example, evaluating of the electric circuits, then there, obviously, one way could be, you, you could uh, revise those topics for the students before they appear in the final exam. If you are able to, because once the minor is given to the students, you evaluate the minor within a week and you uh, get uh, the assessment of the uh, students in CO wise. Okay? You can give more problems to them, you can give more assignments to them, and in fact, uh, uh, after the semester is over, where you do not then interact directly with the students, you can work out a different teaching methodology. You may have to get, okay, uh, 
students couldn't score well uh, in the last semester mm -hmm. during uh, such kind of problems, you may give more tutorial sheets to them. Uh, teaching methodology in the sense you may engage some extra classes related to that topic. So there are so many things uh, that can be done. Uh, in order to, teacher is the best judge I would say. And that also uh, varies from subject to subject. So this is point, uh, point of the teacher. I suppose I am a student. Yes. And, uh, should I know uh, my gap? And how should I uh, cooperate with the teacher? Uh, <coughs> see, this, this attainment level will be uh, communicated by the teacher to the student. It is the teacher who will motivate the student. How does student know that uh, he can only talk about how has he performed? Say for example, he, he got uh, 10 marks out of 20. Okay, then uh, he can only say that he need to work hard. But without teacher guidance, student may not be pinpointly, pointedly identify that where has he left. But teacher out of his experience, because teacher understands the entire syllabus, because teacher is teaching continuously, so he can pinpointedly say that, Okay, this student is lacking on this front and he need to work on Okay, there are many students who are not able, who are not good in cramming for example. They may not be right definition in a better way. But he may be able to get a good score in, uh, you know, create a uh, higher order skills. I had one student like that. He was very good in lab course, uh, like in making circuits, in projects, everything. But wherever he had to write theory, he used to score very badly. He come across and I came to know this thing only when I did that. I told him. He told me, sir, he has interest in, uh, you know, uh, making circuits. And he doesn't enjoy uh, reading things directly. That thing came into picture only after I could analyze this course. Okay. Sir, one last question. As Direct attainment के हमारे दो ही दो ही चीजें उसके अंदर एक internal assessment एक end test करना ठीक है internal assessment में हम सब कुछ कर रहे हैं CO1 में कितना है CO2 में कितना है CO3 में end test में हमारे पास कुछ भी नहीं है ये हम water level में जोश चलते हैं लेकिन हमारे पास सब कुछ होता है लेकिन हम इस point पर भी क्या करें सीधा आपने कहा कि average दे दो some speaker says that कि आप जो जो finally नोस्टे एग्जाम का पेपर आया है उसमें आप अलग-अलग देखो C O one कितना परसेंट है C O two कोर्स में कितना परसेंट है उसके हिसाब से क्या बात है तो कौन सा मैटर अच्छा है Yes See No 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 Here शीला आवे ले ले तो The better thing will be in these circumstances if you can analyze university question paper Okay Then you find out for example uh, CO1 was uh, related to out of say 100 marks, CO1 was covering 30 marks, CO2 20 marks like that. But the problem there will be you do not know how much, how, how, yeah, how much mark that student has gained in that CO2. Okay, but what you can do, whatever total he has gained, you can keep the weightage, individual weights to CO for external assessment. And that uh, total mass you can map with those weights. That thing you can do. Even evaluation with those is not seen over, no? Yes. So, 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 uh, this feeling will have to, you know, uh, set aside in a sense. Uh, hobby ko humne burden nahi maanna hai. Humne process ke andar leke aana hai. And uh, we should keep uh, working towards it. So, it will deliver results. Definitely. So, that's all from my side. Thank you very much.
the young participants sitting in the back row, they can join the next session online. Okay? And all the rest participants have to come in the seminar hall after 10 minutes. Please, thank you. No. आप लोग बेटा आप तो ये रहोगे हम लोग तो आएंगे ठीक है आपको ही करके छोड़ देना बंद है बाहर सक है बाहर बताइए ना वो तो यहाँ नहीं आना यहाँ बताइए दो बजे आप फ्री हैं ना सर को बुला दें दो बजे ना फ्री ना होगा बंद कर दिया नहीं ना नहीं 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 � Sir Edwin, Founder, Dean of Colleges, Dean, Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Director Pandit, Dean Dayal Padhai, Innovation and Incubation Center, under RUSA 2.0 scheme. Sir was also Chairman of CC Department, Biomedical Engineering, Printing Technology, and Coordinator of Technical Education Quality Improvement Program 1.2 and 3. Sir is also done a World Bank project for improving faculty in technical education. More than 15 students have completed their PhD under the supervision of Sir. Sir published more than 95 research papers in journal, conferences, seminars at national and international levels. Sir is also an author and co-author in five books. Sir is having more than 35 year of experience in teaching, research and in administration. Sir visited many countries like USA, Singapore and many more. Sir is an expert member of many national level committees like NBA, NAC, NIRF and various universities, UGC, AICT and also the UOG member of various universities as well as Haryana State Technical Education Society. Sir also has been nominated as Marshal by ANCT to help the technical institution for their MBA accreditation. Sir is having area of interest including data mining, computer network and communication network. Now I would like to invite Dr. Dharmendar to deliver his keynote address. Sir, please. What do you? Sir, Yes, sir. 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 So I am sharing my screen.
which must follow Bloch's taxonomy, mapping between CO, PO, or PSOs at work level, at course level, and at program level. Teaching learning methods, they might follow any mode, offline, online, or both, means hybrid mode. Assessment tools to evaluate the student performance. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, your PPT is not shown, sir. My PPT is not shown? Yes, sir. It is not moving? Not, not sir. Just one. Just one. So you have to share the entire window. The entire window is here. This entire window is here. अब देखना visible है? Yes yes sir. Okay. So should I repeat? Should I repeat? Yes sir. Sir click on the window on the screen sir. Actually this is PDF. Okay okay. So these are the key important key points that every institution must follow their academic calendar for the governance at both institution level and the department level the administrative setup matters if you do not have then please try to build it then enrollment ratio student faculty ratio faculty qualifications faculty cadre ratio all these are related to the faculty student faculty ratio means one uh, against one teacher, how many students are to be addressed? Similarly, their qualifications. If it is engineering college, their minimum PhD, uh, master's degree in engineering, followed by PhD. If you have, the like faculty have, then the cadre ratio. It is one is to two is to six. Like every uh, six teacher assistant professor, there must be two associate professor and against two at least one professor. Their faculty publications must have the benchmarking. It, 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 like every paper published will not be considered by the national accreditation agencies. You must have at least every paper must have minimum DOI. That is sponsored R&D, particularly from industry only. Similarly, consultancy work, again from industry. The IPR published by student and faculty combined together must have a, uh, research collaborations with industry as well as with institution of importance. Now second slide is visible? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, every institution must have the very blend uh, uh, kind of extension activities. Every institution related to HR like the human resource should have the HR policies. Similarly, related to student, every institution must have a student welfare policy. Most important thing is the outcome-based program curriculum, which must follow Bloom's taxonomy. In your case, it might have some uh, lacuna because you are tied to system. If you are following outcome-based program curriculum, then must have the mappings between CO, PO or PSOs, both at course level and at program level. Teaching learning methods, your teacher can use both methods or blended mode like offline or online or both. Then various assessment tools or methods that be combined together with direct or indirect. Every course curriculum must have a good reach of industrial trainings and internships. Similarly, the project development activities and every department or every discipline must have at least one professional society. So these are some few uh, uh, key points. I am going to understood and implement OBE. These points must be understood by both the faculty, 
the management and the student. Okay, what what is the difference between outcome based education and conventional education or traditional education? You might have understood the basically the philosophy. Earlier we were having conventional or traditional education system where we are not measuring the abilities, we are measuring the output. Like when we say that we are having students or infrastructure or the teachers or the examination system and the finally the results and the placements. So normally it, it is called as the normal or traditional education system where we can't say that if a student is having more than 90% marks be able to express. A student who is having more than 80 or 85 percent marks, we can't say firmly that he be able to solve problems. So this was the lacuna in the traditional education system. Then realized at later stage that we must have a system where we can measure the ability of the student. Like if student, whether student is having ability to express himself or herself, whether student have ability to apply modern tools to solve real life problems similarly should have ability to work in a team so that system which measures ability we call it as the outcome based system okay so here in outcome based education outcome based education is a student centered instruction that focuses on measuring student performance that is outcome or ability this outcome include knowledge, skills and attitudes. So for that, in order to implement OBE, we must have this, like to, for this education system, which is based on OBE, first we must have the outcome based curriculum that can be followed or implemented through outcome based learning and teaching or teaching or learning and finally OBE based assessment methods. So our student be assessed through various methods, direct or indirect, which can measure the abilities. Now the most important key point in this OBE, dear friends, these are the fol uh, following are the stakeholders, initially the student, faculty, parents, alumni, employers, management, regulatory bodies and government, all are stakeholders. Now, in every, in every higher education institution, we must have the administrative setup. At institution level, this is only the recommendation or the pro propose that you must have at least your executive council or board of governors or governing council or institutional advisory committee or IQAC. That will have or governance will be implemented at institution level after combining all these committees whether you might have all or you might have any one or a group of similarly at department level normally institutions are having departmental advisory committees academic and administrative audit program coordinator course coordinator and module coordinator so in order to implement OE, you have well defined you should have well defined administrative setup then you have to identify the various assessment methods. You, you are teacher as well as your student must know in advance the various assessment methods or tools to evaluate the performance of the students. Like in case of tier two institutions as the BRCF Behel College of Engineering, we are following <laughs> affiliated university norms where you might have only direct methods. So normally in OBE, Direct methods alone are not enough or adequate to evaluate the performance of the students. In today's uh, this seminar, uh, through your means various uh, academic experts, you might have understood right till now that what is the meaning of direct or indirect assessment methods and processes. So normally we have to use both, but you have to def uh, define or devise a mechanism of how much weight is you are giving to direct methods and how much weight is you are giving to the indirect method. In some cases 80-20 and in some cases 70-30. And sometimes in practice, like practicals you are giving 50-50. So you have to devise the various formats 
for a direct assessment methods so that you can collect the data. Then based on the assessment, you have to propose the various actions to be taken and finally which helps for decision, effective decision making. Again, whenever you are going to say that we are, we are attaining the various targets, then you have to define the various targets. For example, if any score between 2.5 and 3, you can say level 3. If anything like between 2.0 and 2.5, for say level 2, and so on, less than uh, 1.5 to 2, you say level 1. Like in a class, you might have the student of, uh, of uh, you can categorize your student in these three levels, like let us say up to 50%, mean any student who scores less than 50% mark, say level 1, between 50 to 70, say level 2, and 70 and above, say level 3. So this is up to you. Normally, national bodies are categorizing these levels either say 1 or 2 or 3. Means 1 means low, 2 means moderate, 3 means high. And the, what will be the range? That depends on the uh, category of student and the previous results of the, your, your student. <coughs> like in, uh, this is basically institutional dependency. You, you can't say that every institution having uh, like students are scoring, uh, let us say, more than 70%. In some colleges, average marks are 50%. In some colleges, average marks are 60%. In some, it is 70%. So that depends on that. If like the minimum average marks are 70, then you have to set your target 3 as high, means more than 90%. Similarly, if average marks are just 50%, then you can set maximum 70%. So you do, please do not follow like blindly in your institution. Okay. As per the terminology, every institution and department must have their vision and mission statement. Like it is mandatory. Even at the time of establishment of the institution, every institution have a well-defined vision and mission. However, after a certain period of time, they need to be reviewed after taking feedback from your various stakeholders. Like as for the terminology of outcome based education, every program must have its program educational objectives or learning educational objectives. I think need not to repeat it again because you have already understood the meaning of program educational objectives. And like normally we say, and definition if I say, the PEOs relate to career and professional accomplishments of the student after they graduate from the program. So normally I am telling you the PEOs and they be attained only after 4 or 5 years or 6 years. Because your BTEC program is 4 years program, so it is not possible that they be attained during 4 years. They will be attained only after 4 plus two or one years and normally as per the bodies every program must have three to five PEOs. Now whether the PEOs written are relevant or not you have to map with the mission statement means normally all the mission statements are bullet type statements means every mission statement like they might have the three or four uh, bullet statements or five statements. So I have summarized M1, M2, M3, Mn. Means these are the number of bullet statements written under mission statement. You might be knowing that every institution have its vision statement followed by missions, uh, mission statement. Those will help to achieve your vision statement. And if your program is not fit with your mission statement, then it means PEO needs to be revised. Now, see one thing more, that it is a matrix. Basically, it is like established consistency of PEOs with the mission of the department, with mission of the program, every mission of the department, that it is a matrix means rows and columns. Now, first thing to remember that every row must have at least one matrix. Now you understood please, 
that you have here four PEOs and let us say you have four mission statement. So like PEO1 must have at least one mapping with either M1 or M2 or M3 or MN. It like all mapping must be uh, maybe but minimum one. And suppose if you do not have any mapping of PEO1 with any of the mission statement, it means PEO1 is not needed. Either you delete it or revise it. Then the program outcomes. These are the ability of the student which are going to be possessed at the end of the four year program. And in case of like BTEC programs through NBA, they are fixed, need not to be defined or redefined by the institutions. And these are these 12. Like that, every student must have engineering knowledge, the problem analysis, design and development of solutions, investigation of complex problems, modern tools uses, engineer and society, environment and sustainability, ethics, individual and teamwork, communication, project management and finance, lifelong learning. Dear friends, as the colleague, we, you might, uh, after uh, attending this uh, two days seminar, you might be able to do some certain things at your institution level. Then you must understand that these 12 are abilities which are to be possessed by your graduates after four years. They are already well defined need not to be refined, uh, refined or redefined yeah. by your department or your teachers or like this way. You are here to only follow these. Can anyone tell that why these 12 are needed? Any of the teacher who understood this? Why these? <laughs> any of the teacher? Sir, these are... Any of the teacher? Sir, these are defined by the Washington Accord. What is the purpose of What is the purpose of By Washington Accord? That person should not be left after completion of this program. Dear friends, you please first understood. These are the 12 which are mutually agreeable by signatories of Washington Accord. There are more than 20 countries signatories who signed or who are member of Washington Accord to make degrees at par of each, each other mutually. So that a graduate of India will be considered at par with graduate of USA. So basically these are the 12 things, 12 abilities which help to decide whether your program is at par with their program. So that is basically meaning. So these are the abilities. Content may, may vary. Content may vary, uh, may vary either like, like in, in every country. Duration might be vary. Only thing that what will be the similarities that are 12 attributes. 12 graduate attributes which we call program outcome. In other terms, abilities. If my graduate possess these 12 abilities, will be considered at par with graduate of other Washington Accord signatories. So that is the purpose. Okay. At least 2 to 4 PSOs. These two, 2 to 4 PSO differentiate your B your BTEC or BE program with other BE BTEC program of a similar discipline. Like normally convention is that civil engineering of IIT Roorkee is one of the best. So what is best there? That, uh, that will be determined with the help of PSOs. Otherwise all BTEC civil engineer engineering degrees like given by like MBU will be very good or having the same attributes, having the same abilities. But the PSO will decide that why you are, why you are like BTEC civil or CSC or mechanical is the best one in the area. So that will help to differentiate your BTEC degree. So every institution or like every program 
must have at least two to four PSOs. Based on your strength means faculty strength, your infrastructure strength, and other things. Okay. Then the lowest unit is the course outcomes. So course counters, course outcomes are established through the consultation process with the stakeholders by the course coordinators. And normally every program like may have, like every course content may have or may, every course may have four to six CEOs. So basically the philosophy is that a CEO is the lowest unit, means course outcomes, will help to achieve POs and in turn like POs will help to achieve your PEOs uh, and finally the POs will help to achieve your vision and mission state. So lowest unit is the CO and finally your vision and mission with the help of PEOs. So now the philosophy is that every department, every institution may have different programs like BTEC is a program in CSC or mechanical, they are separate program. Similarly, PG programs, they are separate programs. In every program, they might have the courses. So every program may have the PEOs and POs, and every course is having COs, whether it is theory or practical or project or internship or any. So this is Bloom's taxonomy. Basically, it is a classification of the different objectives and skills that educators set for their students. Means learning objectives or outcomes. So and this is the level. Minimum low, low, let us, this is lowest to highest. Learning, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So the lowest level is the learning and highest is the creating. So in short we can say Bloom's taxonomy is a tool to help to design a course. After the data over, university's course curriculum banati. They have the different semesters and every semester they have a framework like some theory papers and some practical papers. Some minor project or major project. Some internships and other things. But Bloom's taxonomy or OBE says that every course, like while we are developing a course, you must follow Bloom's taxonomy. So this is the process. Before you can understand a concept, you must remember it. It means remember the first one, lowest one. To apply a concept, you must first understand it. In order to evaluate a process, you must have analyzed it. To create an accurate conclusion, you must have completed a thorough evaluation. So this is the basically process. And this process will help you to design your course content through your CEOs and then finally the content. Okay, keywords uh, which will help you to write down your CEOs. For, for create, like uh, if you start with remember, like you can use the uh, keywords list, outline, define, name, match, code, recall, and so on. Similarly, for the understanding level, write down to describe, to explain, to restate, to give original examples, or summarize, contrast, like interpret or discuss. For apply, to calculate, to predict, to categorize, to analyze. Similarly, for evaluation, to choose, support, you can understand that these keywords will help you that you are taking which level of CO. Is it the remember level or the understand level or the apply level? Order will remain the same. Let you start with remember and go up to create. But in each course, you need not to have all. But if have, analyze, then you must have remember, understand and apply. Similarly, if you have a CEO on evaluate, then must have the previous four. But you can't say that you do not have understand, remember and directly you are going to create. So if have, like you have to follow the hierarchy. Okay. 
so that is outcome based curriculum uh, i think this is not in your scope but this is given by the affiliate industry meanwhile whatever you have the course content you have to devise your course outcome i think there have uh, already been covered in i think uh, on fourth of november normally teaching learning process you must have the academic calendar you must use audio visual aids in your uh, classrooms through either offline uh, platform or online platform or both good internet connectivity or facility for teacher and student both throughout the uh, duration of the uh, teaching hours and every student must understood and use moocs courses through swam and npdel portal these are different teaching learning uh, steps or some are following all and some are following few like some can like while you are teaching while you are disseminating information teacher must use real life examples not the cyclo style one some teachers may use collaborative learning and quality of laboratory experience with regard to conducting experiment like if you have a list of experiment they they need to be revised every year you know that while you are conducting experiment then you have to note down the readings or the outcomes or the outputs then you have to analyze the data and then the possible action to be taken there is another concept in teaching learning in obe to identify weak student or bright student and then the remedial actions uh, to be taken by the teachers and the department at department level the interest like your classroom sessions must be interactive some are using flip classroom concept and moreover your teaching learning must be supported or must be utilized must be disseminated to ict usage and like some are using case study methods you can use either case study method or give some complex assignment starting from simple to complex so at at end you have to increase the complexity so you can use any of the methods or combination of or all so these are examples i am skipping okay this is very important that to establish the correlation between cos and the pos and psos at course level and program level so you might have understood in your previous lectures that how we establish co and po correlation so this is the just a sample table that happening between a course outcome and program outcome or learning outcome at course level as well as program level so aap dekhiye table ko aapne dekha hoga headings jo hai hamari wo kya hai pos hai 12 साथ में पी एस ओ यदि दो है आपके पास तो उनको भी लिख लीजिए एंड देन यू हैव टू मैप एवरी सी ओ विद यूर पी एंड फाइनली एवरेज नॉर्मली जैसा हमें कहा था कि हर कोर्स में फोर टू सिक्स सीओ हो सकते हैं और हर रो में कम से कम एक मैपिंग जरूर होना चाहिए तो आप देख रहे हैं मुझे वेरी करा है This is at the beginning, means before the start of the program. Similarly, then program level, that this C1 means one course, C2 means second course, C3 means third course, and so on. You might have like 40 courses, some theory, some practical, some training, some intensive, some projects. At the average value, let us say in case of PO1 attainment, the target value should be around 2 and PO2 2.25. so this is at the program level and previous one was the course level so this average value should be here and so on and finally this is the average so no every program may have about 30 to 40 courses where each course may have at least 4 to 6 course outcomes okay like you have to set the target values now your duty is to tell your student how to be how you be assessed 
So normally there are two kind of methods, direct methods and indirect methods. In direct methods, normally the internal assessment, you must get examinations, quiz, assignment, seminar, etc. or project or thesis evaluation. That is means as per the guidelines of the affiliating university. Then the indirect or rubric methods, which includes surveys, various surveys. After every semester course exit, uh, every uh, semester course exit, after four year program graduate exit, and alumni or employer when they are employed in the industry. So we have to give the weighted 80% to direct and 20% to indirect or rubrics. You might be knowing that what is the meaning of rubrics. Means when we are not able to uh, measure the ability through direct methods, then we have to devise our own mechanism which we call rubrics. Okay. So this is the way you have to devise uh, your course plan. The academic, the name of the department, the academic year, class or semester, name of the course, name of the course coordinator, course code, total number of students. Then the various course outcomes. These are the various methods that how let the CO1 be evaluated. What kind of assignments, what kind of test, like the session 1, session 2 or end semester or final semester, this is one. So then you have to write down the marks actually attained by the student. Like for CO1, what are the marks in assignment, what are the marks in test, and what are the marks in final, and so on. So finally we have to devise this and ultimately we have to calculate that how many students are able to attain, let us say if we say that average marks are 55% and how many students have attained 55%. So like out of 74 class, 70 students have attained 55% and so on. So this is the total seats of internal as well as then the CU attainment, data sets. So I am skipping because uh, uh, this needs a needs lot of understanding also. And then this is the CU attainment data set. Internal attainment of CU 126, total number of students 74, number of students achieved. This is internal. 73, 73 out of 74, percentage of attainment more than 98 percent, so mean attainment level 3 in all cases, in internal, similarly external, like out of 73 or 74 students, only 17 or 16 or 18 students attain this, so means less than 30 percent, so means 0. So in internal, all have 3 value, in external, we, uh, like in external uh, attainment level, 0, so 3 plus 0. 0 means internal 20% and external means, this is like external. Now you see, internal in all 3, in external 0, 0, overall attainment 0.6. Can anyone say how it is 0.6? 3 plus 0 divided by 2, 1.5, but we have written 0.6. Why? Can anyone answer? 3 may say, but 2 may say. Yes, please. Are you able to hear me? Are you here to? Uh, are you able to hear? Ye bata ye point se, point six kaise aaya? Overall attainment में point six लिखा है। Average में divide by two से change to multiply two by three ऐसे करते हैं। Doctor Anur। Sir, I can be able to change the meaning of two. Yes, in internal audio को please बंद करिए। Internal का जो weight है जो twenty percent है। External का weight है eighty percent है। so 80% 0 हो गया and 3 का 20% 0 0.6 तो इन सभी केस में 0 0.6 हो गया okay so ultimately PO attainment level data sheet तो आपकी क्या होगी course outcomes के corresponding आपकी value बनेगी और फिर हम इसको calculate कर देंगे so basically this is the way we are calculating 
starting from CO attainment to PO attainment and PSO. So, now we have to say that our first value is and now value is what Means now the new value calculated divided by 3, multiplied by 3, and so on. Okay? So, you have learned this level in two days? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So, if you have any question or query in any of the calculation part or like the attainment part or the data sheet, so please ask me. Okay. So, what, what method is when we can approach when we are talking about the semester exam of the university? Ne, normally, what happened that your CU attainment will be based on your internal as well as external. And this combined together form 80%. Say 2080 internal, if it is between 20 or 30, accordingly you are means external. <coughs> Dono ko combined. After considering, let us say if we give give 20 percent weightage to internal and 80 to external, means like December examination or June examination. Un dono ko combined kariye. Ab ye jo combined karenge, iska banega 80 percent because this is direct method. Ab aapko ye the course outcome hai, to mujhe course exit survey karna hai. वहाँ से मुझे 20 percent मिलेगा, combined together ये मुझे help करेगा CO attainment के लिए। अब ऐसे मेरे पास जो CO means course के छः मेरे attainment है तो छः average values हैं, तो ये सिर्फ one percent। ऐसे मेरे पास जब मैं semesters की बात चलता जाऊँगा, eight semester आ जाएगा, तो मेरे पास आठ और semester के सभी courses का average value होगा। उन सब को combined करूँगा और मुझे वो जो weightage मिलेगी वो 80 percent मिलेगी। उसके बाद मुझे 20% के लिए ग्रेजुएट एग्जिट सर्वे करना है दोनों को कंबाइन करना है वो मुझे फुल अटेनमेंट डेटा शीट बनेगी नाउ दिस डेटा शीट बी कंपेयर विद माय ओरिजिनल मैपिंग व्हिच वाज डन इन द बिगनिंग अब मुझे चेक करना है कि अटेनमेंट हुआ है कि नहीं हुआ इफ इनिशियली द टारगेट वाज 2.25 एवरेज वैल्यू इज 2.0 आफ्टर कैलकुलेशन द अटेनमेंट शीट इट मींस माय पीओ1 इज नॉट अटेन्ड Similarly, we have to compare that data sheet which was earlier defined with my calculation sheet, means attainment data sheet of PO2. If target was 2.0, attained value is 2.10, it means attained. Now, attained is what I have to do, I have to revise the value for the next year. And if not attained, I have to get find out so that or action propose that what were the lacuna, what were the gaps, and after following these steps or the processes for the next, it will be improved. So, this is the procedure. So, just you have written 0.60. You will see it. So, what is this basically? 3 divided by 20. 20 means weightage. Multiply 100, 0.60. Or 0.6 divided by 3 multiply by 100, 20%. That is the calculation that is the Excel sheet. आप जो भी फॉर्मूला फिट करेंगे वो उसको डेटा सीट बनाएं। ओके तो नॉर्मली ये आपके दो मेथड हो गए इनडायरेक्ट असेसमेंट मेथड में लाइक द सर्वेस कोर्स एक्सिट सर्वे आफ्टर एवरी सेमेस्टर ग्रेजुएट एक्सिट सर्वे आफ्टर फोर ईयर एलमुनी एम्प्लॉयर व्हेन स्टूडेंट ज्वाइन और आफ्टर वन और टू ईयर्स प्रोजेक्ट की वैल्यूएशन यू हैव टू राइट डाउन यूर ओन रूब्रिक मैथड because project evaluation will give you more than one ability, abilities like to work in a team, to apply new technologies, to solve problems, to solve complex problems. So, so many abilities we measure through project evaluation and that cannot be measured through direct methods. Therefore, you have to devise your own mechanism which we call rubrics. Then practical evaluation, again to express, to solve, to work in a team. So all these are to be measured through these methods. Okay. So this is direct attainment sheet. This is indirect. So indirect ka apne dekha yoga ke iska kya tha? 20% weight is hai. Ab mein isko combine kar deta hu. Like direct 80%, 20% 20%. 
indirect 20% combined together 100%. अब मुझे फाइनली ये देखना है कि ये इनका अटेनमेंट हुआ है या नहीं हुआ है सो वी हैव टू कंपेयर नाउ कंटिन्यूस इंप्रूवमेंट के लिए मुझे क्या क्या देखना है कि पीओ टारगेट लेवल्स क्या थे पीओ अटेनमेंट वैल्यूज क्या है ये पीओ नॉट अटेंड तो गैप्स आइडेंटिफाइड क्या है और हमें एक्शन टू बी टेक कर वो प्रपोज करना है एंड इफ अटेंड तो हमें टारगेट लेवल्स को रिवाइज करना है सो दैट नेक्स्ट टाइम वी बी एबल टू अटेन more with more percentage so normally if i summarize these are the key responsibilities of hei's for design development and implementation of obe strict adherence on academic calendar administrative setup should be very effective hr policies for faculty competence towards faculty competency and other hrs human resource hr means human resource infrastructure including ict means this should be very strong at campus participation of stakeholders in decision making it should not be that only few stakeholders be involved in decision making all stakeholders must be involved ob based scheme and syllabi particularly based on global taxonomy which can address all levels effective identified assessment tools so that is very much that every course coordinator must identify that which assessment method or direct or indirect be used to evaluate graduates particularly to achieve their cus of the course benchmarking and publications sponsored r and d and consultancy from industry research collaborations with industry institutes industry of repute as well as institution of national or international importance yes product development activities as final product student be able to develop products it may be in terms of actual product like the prototypes or ipas or nowadays we are talking about the startups and finally the 360 degree view that 360 360 degree feedback because you might understood that if i am teacher i must be evaluated through my student if my governance is at institution level that will be evaluated through student teachers and other stakeholders and so on so there should be 360 degree feedback so this is something which i was expected to complete uh, during this keynote address and if you have any query between these two days whether delivered by x expert or y expert or z expert towards obe concept i feel happy so thank you very much for patience here sir one question sir one question yeah sir yeah. about sir about 360 feedback ji yeah. A A C T said that we every student has to register. Every alumni has to register on A C T. Yes. But it is very very difficult, I think. Then you can have your own mechanism. Like you can use your Google form. Okay. Okay. You devise your own questionnaires and ask your students or alumni to give feedback on facilities, teaching, learning, and any other. Whether you are going to implement OBE, you again devise your own questionnaire and flow towards your all stakeholders, and then uh, collect the data, analyze it, and then make conclusions and the possible action to be taken. And it must be properly documented. Yes, yes, it is important. Actually, documentation is the key factor while you are going for accreditation whether it is nac or nba and particularly the nba like the micro level detail documentation is needed any other question
for giving me this opportunity uh, to share my views on this OB concept. Eight of the hour, and every stakeholder must first carefully understood it, then go then go on for implementation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as we are moving ahead for the valedictory ceremony of two days national seminar held in our institution, that is BRCM, College of Engineering and Technology, I now take this opportunity to welcome the today's guests, dignitaries on the stage, staff members and all participants joined online and offline of this seminar for the valedictory ceremony. Participants were very enthusiastic and I think and believe that all participants have gained a lot of knowledge about this two-day national seminar topic. So, first of all, I would like to request Sri Amit Foglaji, convener of this seminar, to present report of the seminar. Please.
डॉक्टर दीपक केड़िया प्रोफेसर गुरु जम्बेश्वर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हिसार डिलीवर्ड इज लेक्चर ऑन कोर्स आउटकम्स एंड प्रोग्राम आउटकम्स एंड मैपिंग विद अटेनमेंट तो इन दिस लेक्चर वी लर्न अबाउट द सीओ पी ओ मैपिंग अटेनमेंट एंड कोर्स आर्टिकुलेशन मैट्रिक्स इन द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ डे टू डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर जी जे यू एस टी हिसार लेक्चर ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ टीचिंग लर्निंग एंड इवेल्युएशन दैट हाउ इट हेल्प टीचर्स एंड लर्नर्स टू इम्प्रूव टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग सो इवेल्युएशन इज ए कंटिन्यूस प्रोसेस एंड एच ए एंड ए प्रोडक्ट एक्सरसाइज इट हेल्प इन फॉर्मिंग द वैल्यूज ऑफ जजमेंट एजुकेशनल स्टेटस एंड अचीवमेंट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स आई होप ऑल दीज थ्री ऑल दीज सेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू क्वालिटी इंप्रूवमेंट इन technical education through outcome based education would be helpful for all the participant for a great learning thanks all for all the active participation who are connected with us in online mode and also in the offline mode thank you everyone have a good day thank you dr dinesh now i would like to request one of our esteemed participant is dr pravin chauhan ji from jagannath university for the feedback of this session please sir thank you very much for inviting me uh, and giving me the job and this is very critical to provide a overall feedback obviously from my side Uh, i have no doubt in my mouth in my mind uh, we will get definitely excellency uh, in the theme of uh, which is uh, the organization selected uh, professor anu sir uh, kedia ji dharmender ji uh, uh, sina ji aur pogla saab dinesh ji uh, obviously uh, you have a good team and uh, excellency the objective and the uh, overall okay. seminar uh, speakers yeah, you have selected and the way they have explained the way, this is very superb okay. and uh, i uh, specially uh, uh, on the basis of this uh, seminar thing because we must relate our uh, objectives and with the outcomes so i now confidently say the uh, outcome based uh, Uh, curriculum development mapping and i have learned uh, very very pleasantly and uh, kedia ji uh, thank you so much uh, for your, your uh, queries uh, the personal doubts uh, you uh, you uh, cleared in our mind so uh, in future also whenever you will organize such activities learning activities i will be proud to uh, participate Uh, as well as to any any expert lecture, I I uh, in the past I also delivered a lecture on budget analysis. Uh, sir, Anu uh, sir called me, so this is a very wonderful opportunity. So thank you, thank you, sir. Over. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now to facilitate. today's guest and the keynote speaker of today's session i would like to request dr anish kumar sharma sir to present a memento and a shawl to dr deepak kedia sir please sir seminar please thank you dr gaur respected dr deepak kedia professor electronics and communication engineering gjus ntg sir 
IPOC coordinator, Mr. Amit, Dr. Vivek, Dr. Dinesh, faculty and participants from all over India, very good afternoon to all. In this next sponsored national seminar, since yesterday, I observed many things like on outcome based education. There are four pillars that is knowledge, skill, attitude and behavior. And first pillar is knowledge. Let us check, there are six level of learning, level one, level two, level three, but starting from the knowledge, basic knowledge. Skill, presentation skill, communication skill, it will develop over the time. First we have the knowledge, after that skill, it may be presentation skill, it may be communication skill. And after that, attitude. It may be positive, it may be negative, but every one should have, I think, positive attitude. Because we have to learn a lot. Last point was lifelong learning. If I am a computer engineer, I must ready to learn mechanical engineering concept also. So our attitude is always towards learning. And at last behavior, how you behave with students, with colleagues, with seniors, with juniors, and everything is related to the education. And after four year, three year programs, after UG program, after PG programs, what is the output? What is the difference between an engineer and a normal graduate? So it should be like there are 12 POs are there. After the four year, at least we should attain these 12 qualities. Our new education policy is also support this outcome based education. NAC accreditation, NB accreditation, there are certain parameters. <coughs> Suppose there is B grade, B plus grade, A grade, A plus grade, means we are using outcome based education, but there is level A level, A plus level, A plus plus level. So, we have to improve continuously. Same at the level of NBA. AICT already remarked that every college should complete NBA accreditation at, in at least 50% programs by 2024. With a certain score. 600 is the minimum score for the qualifying. Out of 1000. So, every teacher for every faculty, from the designing a course to the outcome attainment, every teacher if involved at every part, definitely he will learn a lot. And I hope in these two days, our speakers describe everything from the course generation to attainment level or after you can say vision, mission, after 20 years. COs, POs, PEOs, after four years you can say from the core generation to vision mission you can say 20 year vision they will provide and we have to check as a faculty, as a student what will be the after five years, where I will stand, where is my knowledge and innovation is also important part before COVID-19 there was no online mode and it is developed in COVID, just two years back. And nowadays it is very important. So I hope every participant will follow the guidelines of our experts. And these guidelines are also from the UGC, AICT and from every agency. I thank to all our experts as well as all participants to join this in offline as well as online mode and their positive 
you can say remarks we observed in our uh, group thank you very much thank you thank you sir now i would like to request dignitaries on the stage for certificate distribution ceremony please sir
रजिस्ट्रार श्री देवी शिरसा डॉक्टर के एस सारवान सर सीनियर प्रोफेसर मैकेनिकल डिपार्टमेंट बीच मिलानी डॉक्टर योगेश छाबा सर प्रोफेसर जी जे हिसार डॉक्टर धर्मेंद्र सिंह सीनियर प्रोफेसर सी एस सी डिपार्टमेंट जे जे हिसार फॉर डिलीवरिंग वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव लेक्चर आई ऑल्सो विश टू पुट ऑन रिकॉर्ड आवर सिंसियर थैंक्स टू नेट फॉर फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट I would like to thank our principal sir, Dr. Anuj Kumar Sharma, for constant help. Our principal sir encouraged us to go ahead and provide a lot of infrastructure support for organizing national seminar. My special thanks to Dr. Dinesh Kumar, HOD CSC, Dr. Chidanand Gaur, HOD Applied Science, Anita Ma'am, Sunita Ma'am, Parveen sir, Vivek sir, and Neeraj, Office Assistant. Education Trust Office for support and coordination. I express my thanks to all delegates who participate in seminar. For any inquiry of inquiry or assistance, you may kindly contact me or member of our team. I am thankful to all my colleagues and staff of PRC College for providing support by sharing various responsibilities during the course of planning of this national seminar. Last but not least. I express deep sense of gratitude to Director Sir Dr. S. K. Sina, Management of PRC City, for providing all encouragement and infrastructure support for holding the seminar. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to request all to stand in honor of our national anthem, please, sir. एक बार स्टूडेंट आ रहा है जो आप लोग देखें आगे जो मैंने
मंडे को याद तो जोड़ देंगे आप आओगे ना मंडे को ही बस अभी बच्चों के लिए बोलते जोड़ा जाएगा